So, okay, we're good to go. You can start whenever you're ready, James. Thanks, James. Hi everyone and welcome to Open Channel with Vice Press. We've been away for a little while, but we're back now with a series of two specials to celebrate Thought Bubble 2021. We've got this episode, which is a pre-record, which is with myself, Matt Ferguson, who runs Vice Press with myself. We've also got Tom Luther and our third Beatle, fourth Beatle, Mr. Flory. How's everyone doing? Oh, hey. what, ring, yeah, Ringo. Matt, yeah, Flory's Ringo. <laughs> You know, I would, cool one. I would yeah. take I would take Ringo. I would take Ringo. I'm definitely because Paul McCartney. <laughs> Fuck all y'all. Everyone's like, oh, who wants to be Ringo? It's like you're still one of the fucking Beatles. I know. You realize Mate. this? And Ringo's super cool. I've always thought Ringo was the, was the fun. He narrated beat on Thomas there. the Tank Engine. He just, Engine. He that, just that chilled back everything there. any other Beatle has ever done. Apart from the frogs, yeah, apart from true. the frog chorus, maybe. <laughs> so. Thomas the Tank Engine. <laughs> yeah, Ringo Starr narrated Ringo Thomas was the Tank Engine. narrator. Yeah, no, yeah. I'm, I'm interested. Anyway, yeah. So the second special that we're going to be doing is a live record at Thought Bubble this weekend with some of our um, artists who are releasing prints with us over the weekend. So, um, yeah, how are you how are you guys doing? You well? Can't complain. I mean, busy, busy with school no. and... Uh, all the podcasting and uh, the award season is happening. So also here in Germany. So I'll do some hosting for a couple of award shows. So that's going to be nice. And uh, the book, the book is happening. It's uh, almost done. Uh, we are doing the mock-ups right now. So um, we thought it's going to be um, next Monday, but uh, we pushed it back to my birthday. So December 4th. Sweet. And where's people going to be able to buy that, Tom? Uh, this, uh, it's going to start out on Kickstarter. So people um, pledge us uh, some money for packets or whatever they want to pledge us. And then uh, when uh, the money, the set goal for the printing and uh, shipping and all of that is uh, complete, we will uh, get the books out to the people. Sound. So is, the, um, is it the Kickstarter that goes live on December 4th? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Cool. And how long is that going to run through? Um, I mean, depending on how fast <laughs> the money comes together. So. <laughs> oh, okay. So is it going to be one of those until it's... 45 seconds. <laughs> I hope yeah. so. I until hope it's so. fully funded. Exactly, yeah. That's the plan. Sweet. Flory, how about you, man? How have you been doing? Yeah, we're all right. We're finally out of lockdown, seeing movies and kids are at school. All that sort of gear. I saw Shang Chi on a mon on Monday, and then Eternals on Wednesday. Just trying to get out there as much as they can, <laughs> and just do stuff. Yeah, it's it's been good. It just seems that the whole cinema thing, everything's just come at once. I mean, you guys, you're well behind on the whole Bond, Shang Chi, and those releases. Mm. But even that, I mean, I haven't got around seeing June yet. Last night in Soho, and then uh, there's Ghostbusters next week as well. So next week's going to be yeah. fun filled cinema time. Yeah. We need to go see June. Next yeah. Week, yeah don't for we? Sure. So what they, what they did, what they ended up doing here with all like all the stuff that we missed was, um, so Shang-Chi got like a, they got, it's got, it's released for two weeks and then that's it. It's gone. And then it's, oh, wow. it's getting replaced with like other stuff. So they're giving, they're letting us see stuff and trying to get it all out of the way before all the, the actual new stuff comes out. Mm. So like, yeah, it's just, which is a good idea, really, because if people have been hanging out to see this stuff and they actually care about seeing it in a the cinema, they're the ones that are going to go yeah, yeah. anyway. That's quite a good idea, actually, us. giving each a thing its own window mm -hmm. rather than kind of shoving everything out at once and then it fighting for an audience. You've got, okay, cool, yeah. we've got two weeks here for Shang-Chi, two weeks for Bond, and then you can kind of start yeah, doing all of that gubbins as well. Is that, is that just for the big releases, though, or is it also, like, the smaller ones? Y yeah, I, I mean, I think there's... I think, like, you know, the, the smaller cinemas are doing their own version of it, but, yeah, the bigger, like, the Marvel stuff, obviously, they, yeah, two weeks for Shang-Chi before Eternals came out, and we got a bit lucky, I think... <laughs> lucky, but because we've had everything so... They've pushed back stuff back so far anyway, like, um, Bond is only next week, and then... Um, June's December second, so they've kind of got room to shove some things in mm. there. So yeah, yeah. yeah, it's kind of working. It it's kind of working out in the end. Yeah, in so in weird way. But June next week, boy, oh Matt, are we going to make it after Thought Bubble? If we're still kind of in a depends oh. how I feel because you know I feel pretty crap right now. <laughs> if so. you're still alive, you can see the excitement yeah. is palpable about this weekend. 
Yeah, <laughs> yeah we, we, we're, we're probably going to talk a little bit more about it. But but what I want to know from uh, James and Matt, because this is not the usual place where we've seen you before. So let's hear what's up with that. Well, Matt's in his new dungeon. Do you want to talk about your new dungeon? I've got a new... I, I converted my basement into my office and it took... It was a five-week schedule, which I thought might take, you know, six or seven weeks. It took six months. It's been a bit of a nightmare for me this year, so I've been particularly grumpy. And that's saying a lot. But I'm it's, in now. It's right. done. It's finished. And you've got Shatner overlooking and checking affairs. and it, for, for now, he's just temporary. <laughs> Um, and I'm in the vice press office, so this is where... That's where, where yeah, we work, Yeah, this is mine it? and Matt's gaff, where we keep everything. So this is the office area, um, where we've got the Turtles arcade machine, and all the other bits and bobs. And then in the other rooms, we've got packing rooms, and we've got storage, and then upstairs is archive and things along those lines. So um, so yeah, so I thought it'd be a nice little change of environment to do it from here. We're kind of getting ready for Thought Bubble this weekend, so... It's a bit of a nice change in environment. I guess at some point we'll do a bit of a walkthrough and show everybody what we've actually got in here. And I guess next year, Matt, I think we... Well, I see, I see, I personally, I never understood the interest. It's just like a place with some posters in it. But people probably would be interested, yeah, yeah, wouldn't yeah. they? Which is a bit weird if you ask didn't, me. Didn't you have a couple hundred people... It's just a table that we roll stuff up on. Didn't you have a couple hundred people come out to some shitty yeah. industrial park in the middle of buttfuck nowhere a couple of years ago and get really excited? We did, yeah, yeah, we're still so in the... It actually it go somewhere There were nice. so many people that showed up and I was like... Oh, yeah, no. that was that that <laughs> was um, hectic because we expected what? We'll do that again, yeah. won't we? And, and when it gets warm... I think we expected we'll like 20 people to turn up and I think there were about 100 folks turned up to that whole open day. So that was a bit of a nightmare, especially in the tiny room that we had. Uh, we're still on that same industrial part, but we've got a massive unit now that we've kitted out. So it's three times bigger than our old office. Um, so it's huge. Yeah. We'll put a gazebo mm. outside if we do it again and make it into like a it is, mini. It convention. is something we get asked about barbecue. a lot um, about doing the open channel. Yeah, barbecue, man. You would pretend oh, that. I can, I can smoke some meat. I can smoke some meat. <laughs> that's been my that's been my that's lockdown what, hobby. That's what he said. Yeah, that's been my lockdown hobby. I guess we that should right, jump into actually the point yeah. of what this podcast is about this week. Um, smoke meat. <laughs> yeah, smoke along, smoke meat along with James. Um, yeah, I've lost my train of thought now. <laughs> <laughs> it happens. You're good, buddy. <laughs> We're going to we're this going convention, to there's going to be posters, yeah. and we've not done a convention in two years. The last time we did a convention was this very same convention, uh, and we're doing it again, except this time there's going to be masks and there's going to be no touching, which is kind of good mm. for me, because I don't like touching and I don't like people near me, so I'm going to like keep you two metres away. Yeah, and when people come too close. Two meters. <laughs> it's right. also uh, the anniversary of the podcast, basically. I mean, last year we started uh, the open channel and Thought Bubble, so um, that's pretty cool to see. Did yeah, we? Yeah, yeah. That's that's we year anniversary. yeah, we did the first one. Yeah. And it's because we made remember. the whole we made the whole thing pink and yeah. purple, and they were like, "Oh, that's only one episode. They got to redo it all." Yeah, there's nothing like creating work. <laughs> Should we dive into some of the releases that we've got this weekend? Um, I guess to give a little bit of context oh, yeah, behind okay. Thought Bubble this year. Because it has been two years since we last did any conventions at all. We wanted to make it a bit special for those folks that are making the trip out. So everything that we release this weekend uh, will filter through eventually onto online, but it won't be one online dump. We're going to filter it through over the next few weeks. So anyone coming along to Thought Bubble this weekend will be able to pick something up that is going to be spread out over the next few months. So it should make it nice and easier. We've got a few little surprises as well. But shall I jump into our first release? James, which I guess... James, one yeah. second. Um, how about you tell the people first uh, where you guys are situated at Thought Bubble, like the tables and everything, so they have they, they know where to go. Uh, in Thought Bubble, uh, yeah, I can't remember that. Booth 1 and Booth one. 2. Is it Booth 1 and Booth 2? Booth 1 and Booth 2, because we're like the big yeah. boys. Um they, they they gave us a booth this this year, which is like a in, bigger space. It's in the fill it Red Hall. I mean, you look at the map. Yeah, it's we're in Red Shirts place. Hall, booth one and two. Um, yeah. And like Matt says, we've... It, it, basically, there's a map and it's got Vice Press written on it. So you know what? Whoever's watching, use your brains, right? Look at the map. 
find your own way there. You it's, the booth lights up this year, so you'll be able to find yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. That's true. You'll see it from space. Up. It's one of those interesting, like, one of those weird things about where you're going to be located, where's your table? I'm not knocking you here, Tom. But anyone <laughs> going to the convention, to anyone not going to the convention, they don't really give a fuck where we are. And to anyone going to the convention, if you've ever been to one of these, the maps are pointless anyway, because you're just going to, you'll get lost You'll just wander, wander around, around and you'll, and find, you'll it. find it. Look for the big pink and blue glow because we've ordered some fancy neon lights this year. We have Sweet. gone, or yeah. no expenses spared. I wanted the neon <laughs> light for the office, so I was like, "Oh, we can, I can do it as like we can do displays at the convention." Uh, but really, so we can have a neon light. In the <laughs> I mean, <our> booth, <laughs> for both people coming to Thorpe this year, our booth is going to look amazing. But um, yeah, it should be cool. We've got big black drapes yeah. to put the posters on and stuff, you know, like and tablecloths. You know, a we've, proper job. We've got tablecloths. <laughs> that sounds so, so fancy. It, but do you guys yeah. do you guys working with Gary or is it like because I heard a little something? No, that there was some sharing, <laughs> some sharing going on. Piss off, Gary! No sharing. He wanted to take all the tubes. I was like, <laughs> I need some tubes, Gary, <laughs> and some other stuff. I'm gonna go do a signing with Gary. Um, amp jam should say amp jam on saturday in the afternoon can't remember the time yes free poster. so um i guess by the time this goes out <laughs> most people will have been to the anyway or when is this going out tom this is going out tonight oh is it going out tonight yeah. brilliant okay Today, excellent yeah. fantastic this, this, this is the pre this pre party half live the pre party um i'm not drinking i should be drinking the yeah, so Brilliant. Gary is doing a signing. He's got a few of the artists that are releasing prints by us this weekend. So you've got Matt that's got a signing there. There's Drew Millwood that's doing a signing too. Andrew Swainson and Raid71, Chris Thornley. They're all doing signings with Amp Jam. We are going to be taking tubes along. So we're going to have a few at our booth. Um, Gareth's going to have, stroke Gary, is going to have a few over at the Amp Jam booth as well. And I think they... The Gary thing is stuck. stuck. Is stuck fast. Should we... Should we sh- he should I, never have said he didn't like it because that's just I, like. I would love to see also the new tubes. I mean, you can show that to the people. I mean, if you have them around, James. Um, but yeah, 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 they're just there. We'll um, if if you you three yeah. talk, I'll go and grab a tube. That's, that sounds good. In a second. We can but yeah, talk. get Gary, about. I guess. <laughs> no, he's he getting me some iron too. brew and some chocolate. I said I'll, I want iron brew and mm. chocolate, and he's actually. Seriously, Mate, he'll, he'll have your full gift basket and everything. Gary, Gary's a good kid. <laughs> Gary's the best. I like him. Gary a gets lot. it done. But yeah, so it... he got a Guardians of the Galaxy Volume <laughs> there Two. You go from me for free. Uh, yeah, so uh, he's back. We just saw for James free. brought in the the real nice tubes. Oh, what, what, so what I bought the tubes. Oh, what the tubes that we've got? Tell these us, are these are really, so these are really uh, great. Plastic um, free we tube. wanted to kind of, I mean, without greenwashing too much, because obviously um, I can't say that these are. That is a that is a word right now, isn't it? Greenwashing. greenwashing. So we what? What's that? Oh, uh, because of the cop thing, everyone's saying it's greenwashing, which is like they're just pretending to be environmentally yeah. minded, but it, it's something really. we've always tried to be as sustainable as we can, and. You know, that's evident in the fact that we do the notebooks and we kind of release those with prints, uh, leftover prints, damaged prints and things. And tubes is an interesting one because we wanted to look at how we could improve the tubes that we sent out, but also how we could minimize plastic. To be fair, the plastic that was used in the other ones was um, purely the, the end caps, which are recyclable in some places, but are not everywhere, depending on how your plastic's recycled and things. I think it needs to be chipped, doesn't it? Into yeah. Chips, and then they so stick it in. So, what we wanted to do was kind of create a tube that was still reusable because that's one of the benefits of the other tubes that we use, but also that it's a bit more sustainable in how it's made. So, this is the final product that we've had. So, it's quite fancy, really, but I'm really proud of this. So we've worked with a company that's. <laughs> this is a really interesting. <laughs> <image of chips. laughs> Uh, along this with this big tube thing, this has been my um, one of my passion <laughs> projects this year is developing Often. developing this um, developing this tube so for those of you that email in and say how the hell do we open it we can't ho- open it the I was big, gonna say that's all you're gonna get the big giveaway is when we put tape around this bit there's a bit of tape yeah. so yeah so it just slides on it's double cord tube it's counter wound so it's wound one way on the outside core and wound the other way on the other side core 
So it's still super thick. I can stand on it without it kind of making a dent. And it's pretty cool. Very proud of you it. Just say, you just say it's super thick. Yeah. Wow. Wow. <laughs> I have go. a vision here. I, I've got a vision of um, in about a month, you ordering a, a custom <laughs> roll of tape that says, cut here, you fucking moron. Just around <laughs> well, the... it says vice press <laughs> on it, the tape. The, it does have the vice oh, press does. logo okay. on. So yeah. We did contemplate that because originally we did it with just plain, plain brown tape. So it just kind of molds in. And I don't know if, I don't know if you remember back in the day. <laughs> you can't see the joint at all. Yeah, those guys that Brilliant. used to order from Gallery 1988 back when they kind of first started. Gallery 1988 used to have these tubes that were kind of similar to this, but they had me- with metal, the metal bit. caps on. Yeah. So... And I had, I mean, I had... A can I, opener. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I kind of, I remember having to hack into it with some, uh, with a knife before... Well, there's just a little seal with the tape. Yeah, I know. Put, yeah. yeah, but, you know, some of us are idiots. And we didn't realise that. <laughs> you know now. Huh? <laughs> so we've tried to kind of make it as obvious as possible, but really proud of those. And the feedback online seems great. We did, this is the third iteration of this tube. The other, t- other couple that we had weren't quite thick enough. So we've altered them slightly. And these seem to be pretty robust, to be honest. Um, so, yeah, really happy with those. <laughs> Matt's brain is about to <laughs> implode on itself if you talk about fucking tubes for any longer. So, let's get on to some posters. <laughs> Jesus Christ. They're very yeah, robust. They're very robust. They're uh, very sturdy. So, Tom, how are we going to do this? Are you going to pop some in- images up on the screen? Of course, and gonna, of course. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how, that's how it always works. It's seamlessly. So, you, you just do your thing. I'll, 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 I'll match magic. it. So, has, as he's a guest with us today... Oh, well, not a guest. He's a co-presenter, isn't he? You're doing such a great job. Who? You. Let's oh, Florey. Florey. <laughs> I thought I was head presenter. I'm not a guest. I'm the so boss. So we've got Florey's Ooh. new print. Oh, I did that. They live, um, which I'm really. Ooh. I think it's, it's to be fair. I think it's it's pretty. It's really it's good. Yeah. It's really clever. Um, Florey, do you want to say a few words? <laughs> nah. No. <laughs> My favorite bit. Um, no, is yeah. The I, books. Talk about the books. Tell us about the books up here. Oh, I wasn't going to talk about the books, but you're supposed to find them on your own. But sure, we can uh, just ruin all that. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah. I, just say so what hap- interesting shit with the So book. what happened was I was drawing the whole thing and then I think we were undecided if it was what size this poster was going to be, but I was making it big. And then we said, yeah, it'll be a big one. I was like, okay, cool. I'll zoom in to full size. And then I realized that all the, you know, just rectangles I had back there for books weren't going to cut it. And I said, oh, Christ, now I've got a whole bookshelf that I have to name every goddamn book. So I had a bit of fun with it and we had thought up some ideas. So most, uh, not most, but, you know, half the books there sort of relate to Carpenter Films and they've got little nods and funny titles and stuff. So if you pick one up, get in there with your magnifying glass and see what you can find. Right. So these will be available as editions of, they're both editions of 160. There's a white version and a black version. And we've printed these as lithographs. And I think we kind of, we've stuck to the lithograph thing quite um, adamantly for some releases, just because it absolutely makes sense. And I think folks are coming around more to the fact that lithographs are as good as, if not better, with the right print than screen prints. Obviously, we'll show a couple in a minute that are screen prints. And you can see why we choose screen print for some artwork and lithographs for others. But like with Matt's Halloween that we did the other week, it just it kind of suits the art more, and it helps with the printing, and it helps kind of just bring out that detail. Yeah, looking looking from the collector's perspective, uh, I really I realize it as well, and people are more open to it. And like even when this discussion came up a couple of weeks back, they were all like defending and like mentioning uh, you guys uh, doing the litho. So uh, you can do interesting finishes with litho the same way you can do with screen print, or even maybe more variation and, and crazy papers mm. and foils and stuff there's so much to do like we did the 2001 with matt griffin mm. on that foil and it was just i think that wouldn't have looked as good that's as the exactly what the I, foil comes through all of the color that's exactly what i was going to say you that know, it's not as his, that 2001 even both versions wouldn't have looked as good as a screen print i think that's what the decision that's that needs to start being made because Screen printing has been pushed so far and some people are brilliant at pushing it. Like Matt's brilliant at what he gets out of it as well. But there's some people that I f- like even me now, like pushing into kind of the a slightly different style and kind of trying to elevate the artwork a little bit from what I used to do. I still find that I start off and he always tells me just to stop doing it, but my brain always thinks about, okay, well this has to be restricted in this way because it's going to be, 
screen printed and I, I can't stop thinking about that. And there's this one and there's another one that I'm working on at the moment where I was asked that I was at the start, I was like, is this going to be litho or not? And they're like, yeah, just that's, that's fine. Do that. And I was like, sick. I'm just not going to think about that. And I think it's coming out, it's going to come out pretty cool. Like the, the job that on my thing, the uh, print for the thing, right. I had all this fucking trouble drawing the goddamn fire because I don't know why it just, I just couldn't, I couldn't get it to work. And I think that was because I was like, well, that's not going to print. If I do it like that, that's not going to print. And you kind of get that in your head. Whereas if on this um, exploding plane that I've just drawn, I'm like, the I got this nail kind of, you know, 80% of the way there with the fire first crack. Cause I'm just not thinking about that. I, I can just do what I do, what I would do without thinking about yeah, it. Yeah. Well, uh, it's interesting. You've mentioned fire though, because with screen printing yellows and reds, they, 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 the inks are always never really very opaque. So you can't print them over the top of something dark. Mm -hmm. So you've got to print it underneath the dark stuff. And then you'll always get this halo around with the trapping and stuff. And it just looks gross. Whereas obviously with, with litho, you can eliminate that. So you can get much better contrasting colors without the ugly trap lines, which um, most people probably don't even notice, but I hate yeah, yeah, trap same. lines. Hate them, hate them. I think it's it's about it gives an extra option, doesn't it? Because for folks that want to make sure that they kind of put the art at the forefront of what they're doing and kind of get the best quality output and not have to worry about volume of colours and everything along those lines, it's a good option to do that. But then you've got artists like Drew Millward, Drew, Drew Millward and Raid Seventy One, who will show in a minute where their style lends itself really well. But even yeah. then, when you look at what Raid did for um, Bottleneck Gallery with um, some of that Pixar stuff. Um, they did some of those as G clays and actually it kind of just gave Chris that uh, extra leeway just to go a little bit further with what he was doing. Mm. Then there's also the practicality. I mean, I don't know. I'm sure a lot of the folks that listen to this kind of keep a tabs on what's going on with other galleries as well. And there's just such a huge backlog at the moment with screen printers too, because... January, February. Yeah, well, no, if we put something now, it'd be more likely March. So it's just because Oof. there's there's such a backlog and there's a number of reasons to that. There's a paper shortage um, and all sorts of other boring stuff too. But just to give you a little bit of a comparison, we'll jump to Matt's The Thing. So Matt obviously did the artwork for the home release, the 4K release of The Thing. And it. it was kind of the reaction online was was really great. And we kind of, some of the questions, Matt, you kept getting asked were, when are we going to release this as a print? When's it going to be available? We always had the intention of doing so, but we just had to... Just needed to get the it yeah, signed off. Like her. So we will have those Maybe. online soon. Um, but this weekend, we're going to be releasing the Ooh, that is rain shiny. rainbow foil variant version, which will be available try and get it in the sky horrible. is it it's hard to show is it the lab, lava thing you were talking about yeah yeah it's all like mottled and and it, i've made it so it shows through more in the space and it just looks yeah it literally looks like a, yeah. a blue and sort of light blue yeah. dark blue purple uh, lava lamp it's really cool it's sort of almost like a bit of like a already already borealis mm. sort of effect which is kind of like yeah. quite fitting. It looks really cool. So this, yeah, the camera's no. not picking it I up. Think, I think at the at is. the show that's going to be a killer. Like you'll be able to see it, and I think that's true for probably the the lithos. Actually, like as soon as you see one, I think you're like, oh yeah, I, I get it. Like this is because it's yeah. it's offset lithography. I mean, like, you can see that, yeah, can't yeah, you, James? The so what you've got over here. So foil. how we've done this is so this is a lithograph as well, and it's on lava foil paper, which is similar. It's a little bit different to what we printed. Uh, Matt Griffin's on but a little bit different in terms of it rather than it being a kind of a wave it's more of a lava effect so it's kind of it's through like a weird mottled so had, yeah like yeah, it looks like lava well, yeah. we thought that would look really cool with the kind of the um, the star system on the map and the map at the back with the sky because it kind of gives that that kind of eerie waviness throughout but then what it allows us to do is to kind of give a nice overprint so we can get the contrast on Kurt and all of the details and everything in there but it still gives it that really cool kind of creepy effect too. So I think this is definitely, and this is one of the reasons why we're releasing it this weekend. One, we wanted to have something super special, but also it's one of those that when folks see it in person, they'll mm. be like, holy shit, actually that is really cool. And again, that's an effect. Yeah. 
that is just going to be that would be just so difficult to get as a screen print or if you did do it as a screen print that would be we'd have to retail that at 100 pounds just to kind of yeah. justify having to do it which just takes it out of so many people's price point and fundamentally what we want to want, want people to be able to do with our artwork is to be able to get it so they can stick it up on the wall and have it i think i think early yeah. days like even when i was buying prints and stuff like that it was and I, I love screen prints. There's some, there's a magic to a really good one. I yeah. think that's why a lot of collectors and that's why everyone became interested in it. Because once you get your first really nice one, it's like, oh wow, I can't believe they've, you know, it's all been pulled a color, a uh, color and time and all that sort of stuff. But the, but I mean, at some point, at some point, you just want the picture, and I want it to look as best as it can. So whatever you need to do to do that, I say that's the, the best way to go. Yeah, I was just about to ask, do you want to hang up technique or you want to hang up the artwork? Exactly, yeah. I'm never really about, about I just want it to look as good as it I don't can. Think, yeah. I think there's yeah. such a kind of, I think there is kind of quite a toxic undertone in the collector's market sometimes where they kind of, oh, it's not a screen print, I don't you want can, it. You can <laughs> Arsehole, and it's like you can, <laughs> you've got to kind of that's right i'm talking about you you've got to do what's best for one the artist and two for the art and then how is it going to look on your wall because the thing is i guess fundamentally what when we set up vice press and we say this a lot we want the work that we wanted we wanted folks to be able to stick up on a wall and enjoy and kind of in, like i mean if you want to kind of put it in a flat file and collect them cool that's that's up to you as well but actually our our kind of main market are those that actually want to display it and love it like what you do, Tom. I mean, yours is forever changing your background and I really appreciate that. And it's similar to what we do here and what we do at, I do at home. We're always swapping and changing stuff out. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think... I'm going to have a different... I'm going to have a different cardboard cut Every time. Oh, every, every time. Each week. Okay, yeah. now you said it. Can you even still buy those things? Because I, I got that like from this comic book shop that nice. I used to work at. Last picture show. Ago. And it was just in the back and I stole it. Yeah. I'm surprised he's so, not like light pink because they had him in the window for <laughs> four years, five years. Or... It's from um, Star Trek Generations. So it's like from 1993. Oh, the way they were um, all together. When they had Captain Picard in it as well. Where they wrote some absolute garbage to get them together. <laughs> yeah. While we're on the... For like one yeah. scene. Well, we're on the subject of the thing. So I'll share. This is a screen print. Double, Double thing. thing. So uh, this is our second release with Drew Millwood, who Drew's an artist that I've followed for a long time and is kind of one of the first artists that I bought screen prints back. From back in the Lift it up then. Two. Straight <laughs> up. Um, so this is Drew's do, 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 for do, 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 the thing. And this is a screen print. It's and cool. That looks crazy. Print. That looks just crazy. Print. Oh, man. It's There's cool. a lot going on in that. A lot of detail. Hold it up a bit higher so we can see the base because it's got the base down at the bottom of its mouth. Move it over, move it over, move it over. Oh, yeah. So this is printed yeah. by Prince of so Thieves like in, in, in again, it's really cool. start to use a bit more. They're local to us. That's very screen yeah. printy that, and it, but it kind of lends itself to it because it's it's a bit more hand pulled. Prince of Thieves is like more mm. old school, so it's a bit more gig post. I mean, uh, James, James, what would you cool say? I mean, you've seen the digital images, and I, I have only the digital image, but see it on a camera. Is is there? I mean, it looks even on a camera already better than on a digital image. Is that is that? Can you? Yeah, there's. I mean, the dig, this is a thing with like pops prints. like crazy. Yeah, they're they're kind of the the as a JPEG. They're really good, and you can kind of see them. But the thing that always stands out for me is when you see them printed. The colors are just absolutely batshit crazy. Like this whole teal color and the red glow and everything along those lines. And you've got kind of the different um, morphing of the thing up here. You've kind of got all the different creatures and shit. So mm. it's really cool. And then the serenity of it. So the whole idea was it was wor it worked really well as a companion piece to his print that he did for They Live, which we've got yeah. up on the wall up there. So the variants are have obviously have their regular, sorry, have their own kind of color tones and kind of are suited to the film and things. But then... Where it really ties it together. I was trying to strangle myself with the headphones. By the way, no, please do it. It'll, it'll be good content. <laughs> <laughs> is with the variant, you've got the metallic. It's like the line art, white, almost, isn't it? silver. Really cool. Yeah, that kind of keeps it really consistent with the, with the, uh, with the they live there. So Drew's done an absolutely cracking job with it. I mean, we'll talk to more. We'll talk to Drew more on Saturday as part of the panel with regards to this because. Um, Drew loves doing this kind of thing, but I think he finds it so frustrating because he holds himself to such high standards. And he has, typically with his regular work, he has the free format of doing gig posters and his own original mm -hmm. stuff. 
so he doesn't kind of have the confines of a licensor. But I think this is an example where you go to an artist and you kind of say, look, we enjoy the style that you do. We like what you do. We think it'd fit to these films. Have at it and crack on. And something Matt is very good at in becoming even better at is kind of just helping nudge artists in that direction that kind of elevate it from, yeah, that looks cool too. Actually, no, holy fuck, that looks quite good. Well, I, uh, can't, speak, really good. I can't speak for Drew, but for me, personally, like I like the challenge of working to something so I find it more daunting just to do my own thing I like oh I've got to make this feel like a Jurassic Park post or make this feel like the there's thing. an end there's yeah. an end goal and I like that I like that aspect to it because then there's like a sort of problem solving mm. so and, and, that, that's, and that's why you've got a design you enjoys that process you're not mind. necessarily a graphic designer but you've got a designer's mind more than an artist's mind I think yeah definitely yeah that's a really good point. That's a que- I'm writing that down as a question for Saturday. Um, Do you see yourself as a actually, designer I guess, or an artist? That's always a good yeah, one. But by the way, people, if, if you're seeing this already, uh, if you have questions, write them down, bring them to Thought Bubble. I'd say that that is a definite fact of the most popular work that we've done or the most popular work that I've done. It always has an element of graphic design and... Not a... Not a, not a it's a thing that's something else. Not yeah. like that nonsense from 10 years ago i mean like it's just like got a, a pleasing graphic element to it and it's not just f- floating head you just gotta you just yeah, gotta know I how think... to lay shit out don't you like that and, and then because yeah. the, the whole reason Make that the whole reason that layout composition type has rules and uh, it, uh, something that you kind of expect to see uh, uh, th- there's a reason that's in design things are right it's because it's pleasing to the eye. Even if you don't know why it's right, you yeah. will gravitate towards that. And that's why the most popular posters and prints and pictures are... All... But people people always make the mistake, don't they, of being regimented with their thing. So they go, this has got to be the title. I'm going to have to put it exactly in the middle. But, for example, say with Transformers, the title for the movie is like... All one of the most the annoying... You can't just put that directly in the middle. You've got to place it so it feels right. One of the most annoying yeah. low film titles ever. I mean, oh, do you remember us mental. trying to figure out yours? And I was like, no, it needs to... That's not right. <laughs> like, because it's wrong. The thing is actually wrong. They've designed it. It's not. Of They've cent- actually designed it, it wrong. It's not in the center, but it feels like it's in the right place. And then you end, you have to make the art fit around yeah, it. Yeah, it's kind of oh, yeah, it's but, stupid. And they should fucking fix it. And it drives me insane. Like if I if I was doing a movie if I was doing I a, did fix it I changed well, it we, and I had the movie over to I the side. I think what we did on the so stuff like that a, no one will ever see is what it should look like. Yeah, but then they they said to me when I was doing the steelbook and the DVD, no, you, the movie has got to be there. It's got to be in that order. And I was like, well, can't I just move it over so that it's just like a nice flow? Yeah. No. <laughs> okay. It's. I mean, it is. I think the other thing going back to Drews very quickly. Uh, I think this book, like Drew's, Drew's colorblind as well. So I think that's one of the things where his different kind of crazy color combinations come from is kind of dealing with that. Um, and looking at it, I kind of remember him talking about that on a podcast a few years ago. So I think that's where he's, a lot of his colors kind of originate from too. That's very but interesting I guess, because he has this like pink and yellow thing a lot of the time, blue, pink and it's yellow. Really and, cool, and you're like, what, why does that still look good? <laughs> like... There's some, there's, yeah. and it's like in sections and stuff, mm. and they're all overlaying each other, and it's like, well, what? well, he gets the values right, doesn't he? That's the, yeah, uh, yeah, that yeah, crazy yeah. thing that people artists talk about values, which I didn't realize was a thing, yeah. but that's the thing. <clears throat> so going back to Matt's comment from a few minutes oh. ago about things that are a thing, um, <laughs> yeah, that rubbish. <laughs> so Nobody likes that sort of crap. Andrew Swainson's poster for the Jaws. Now, actually, this is kind of, I think. Um, I kind of hopefully that's, speak for you as well. That's more subtle, so it makes it yeah. cool. I love how subtle that is. This is one of those clever ideas. I think where Jaws, you've kind of got such a huge kind of raft of really good quality posters that have been done for Jaws. I think, you know, there's two people in, in this conversation that have done amazing ones. And then you've got that Phantom City collective one, which is where you kind of look in through the jo- uh, shark's mouth. Yeah, I had that idea. Yeah. Yeah. Every yeah. single time he has to again. say it every idea. single yeah. time. So and this is another they, example. They, 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 they and read the my one you got there on the wall in the back. <laughs> James, 
yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the Anthony Petri chart, one yeah. again. It's just one that's really clever and just just works. And I think this is kind of going to be up there in those kind of Jaws posters. That actually, that is that is really cool. I've shared this with a few. I Jaws. love what he did with the eye. Yeah. With Bring the, that closer up to the camera so you can see. So you've got Bruce there. The eye is the the sort of uh, highlight of it is yeah. Bruce the shark swimming actually, around there in circles. In the water. It's really can cool. That? Oh, that's fucking nuts. So I didn't even. Real... I've seen this JPEG a few times, and I didn't actually realize that. I just thought it was like How cool weird is that? water. It's really good. This... It's so subtle, it's... but when you see it, you're like, oh, and it just makes the. Shape. And it's so well yeah. rendered. Like I actually thought that he just a lot of it was take he'd taken a photo of like a drone shot of some of the beach and he sort said of, that, you know, I think photoshopped he, it. He's, he's, he did. He's he was inspired, inspired by, by some, shot, yeah. some. Yeah. But it's really yeah. well, because when you zoom in, like it, you can tell that it is actually, he's drawn it. That yeah. He's rendered it all. And it's like, that's yeah. fucking yeah. stupid. You should have cheated. He, he was working on it for a long time. Like it was, <laughs> A, it, a month, couple really months good. at least, I think he was working that, on. Yeah, so we first came to this with this idea before the Universal Monsters one, I think. And he's just been working on it yeah. for a while and then he put it into... Because originally he did it as a flat painting and then it kind of it kind of lost the concept, I think. Sometimes when we get a sketch through, we really like a sketch and we really like it. And then they kind of an artist will come with the next stage and it kind of loses something a little bit sometimes. But he went, <laughs> yeah. he went back to it and I think he, he kind of created this in Blender, if I'm right, Matt. And kind of uh, did it as a 3D, he kind of did it more did it. as a 3D rendering. Yeah, he sent over some uh, Blender shots. But the other thing that I think is really oh, clever... Oh, to get like the angle right on the buildings and the vehicles. And yeah, because it's such a weird perspective that it's kind of pushing out that way. Then over here, it's kind yeah. of starting to push out this way. And you've got it kind of... So you've got lots of different angles to play with. And I think he just was struggling yeah. with that a bit. But then when he put it through that, it really worked. And I think the other kind of really clever thing... and. It, Andrew's kind of a bit of a master when it comes to doing stuff like this, is that throughout the film, yellow is such a signifier in terms of, okay, there's danger impending. And I know it kind of seems like a bit of a no-brainer to put Alex Kittner, uh, Alex Kittner kid on the, the lilo out there. But again, you've kind of got these specks of yellow throughout. And this was when I was showing it the guys at the, the Jaws Pippin, Bank Club. Pippin's there. Pippin, yeah. Pippin. <laughs> And there's loads of there's loads of Easter eggs which I'll kind of share more tomorrow on the live panel when we go through. But you've got. Um, Do you mean Saturday? Because t- tomorrow's Friday. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean Saturday. Yeah, he's tomorrow. so that mentioning that he's going to be there, Andrew Swainson. So uh, people can ask him as well in person. He's going to have a booth as well, I think, with uh, with uh, Andy Ferris and some like the poster posse booth. He is indeed. Yeah, and Dole yeah. maybe. He's going to have a poster posse booth, so he'll be there. And I think he's also doing a sign in with Gary at Amp Jam as well. So he'll be there to sign them. And we've still got a... Oh, Gary's got all the signings, hasn't he? Good old Gary. We've still got a few of the beach closed pins left as well that we did. So I think we Uh, might dole them out to uh, the first few people to uh, to pick up one of Andrew's posters um, tomorrow. Andrew's print, will, as well as um, Drew's The Thing, they'll be online from Tuesday the 16th of uh, November as well. Perfect. Right, let's crack on before Matt loses the will yeah. to live completely. Um, we, do you, do you have another? I'm dying. Sorry, everybody. I'm not very well. I'm going. I might cancel this weekend. Yeah. Well, James, we get... <laughs> do we have another uh, uh, artist that has a disability in there? For because what? So many some inclusive posters. artists Ugh. in there. I love that. We do. So, well, actually, we do. Exactly. All joking aside. So, um, so Kandra Hope. We're releasing Kandra Hope's Hellboy Two for licensing purposes set. Um, so we've got Hellboy and Abe Sapien there. So um, I think, again, something Kandra is kind of quite um, public about is that Kandra um, suffers from, uh, she's got some kind of a condition with her eyes and I'll get it wrong. So I don't want to act as completely ignorant. But Kandra has, yeah, so Kandra has um, produced these two, which are in an ongoing series with us. We've got, we did the Snake Pliskin set beforehand. Yeah. These are beautiful. These are going to be available as a limited edition A3 print. Um, that Abe Sapien is so cool. It's really, it really cool. Really um, and then you've got old Hellboy there as well with Ron Perlman. So these are really cool and we really like these. And this is a set that Kandra is going to continue doing with us. We've got another couple in for approvals on a couple of other films as well. She's um, she's great. She's really nice to work with and she never disappoints in terms of the artwork that she sends through. Exactly. Yeah, they look, they look, really, they look nice. really cool. And I, it, it, they really annoy me because I was having a look at them the other day. I'm like, it's so well painted. It's just... 
Yes. Yeah. I can't yeah. do that shit. Because she they... sends through the line art first, and that's what we get for approval. So it's like literally like a pencil outline sketch, and that looks really cool. And then she just does this painting, and it's really loose, but. Mm defined at the same time and when you see the up close the way she, so, she renders so it who's the really better nice. hellboy it's ron perlman or dave harbour ron perlman oh. <laughs> that other one does not even okay. exist That's all i, I couldn't even get through I've it i've not even seen it I'm i couldn't even get through it it was horrible huh? and it, it's atrocious isn't it's such it? a shame because it's a shame because yeah, david harbour he so should cool, have been he could have been so good and you can see him trying through that garbage that's on his face and you're just like oh fuck me and it, it literally looked like that some cheap ass fucking TV show that they just cobbled together in five minutes. Yeah. <sighs> but but, but glad, glad this is a yeah because the Hellboy makeup was like perfect the Ron Perlman one because he could emote and uh, obviously Gilmore del Toro knows how to don't, make sure that stuff is all don't correct. It's just fuck beautiful. with here or here like just that's my problem with the new Star Trek. This one of the, you know a lot of the alien makeups on the new Star Trek, they cover up their mouths. It's like the Klingons. It's the full. They've got stuff over the mouth. It's like a mask, and then they can't emote. So when you've got a main character and they're just going, yeah, it mm. sucks. Takes me out of it. Fish lips. I think it's one of those things that when you kind of trying to adapt a comic or whatever it is into something that's live action, you kind of struggle too much by trying to make it too lifelike or too much of a exact replica of in the comic because i think that's where the the new hellboy film struggled with the with the outfits is that what guillermo del toro did really cleverly was that okay we're gonna have to make some concessions here in order to elevate the film like yeah. going he back made to a the movie printing version method, you have to make yeah exactly whereas when you try to be too authentic to the source material sometimes Slavish. you kind of lose that and it kind of yeah and it just makes the rest of it that's when you end up trash. with things like Watchmen and stuff which is fine but I may as well read the book. The book's better. Yeah. And, and then you push, the and then you push through to something like the show. But then you see the new yeah, Watchmen, the, the TV show, fucking is brilliant. amazing because it's the same concept, but it's just run with yeah. it. You it's have to add thing. something to it, and I think that's where um, what was the was it Sweet Tooth? That's where the Sweet Tooth adaptation oh, did. Oh yeah, that was amazing. That, Sweet Tooth was so good. That's where it did something really clever, and it took the concept of the comic and then actually changed it to make it more. Big man, ah, oh, relevant man. for the TV. You watched, you watched Sweet Tooth. Mm. I've watched yeah, a few yeah, episodes. Yeah. Brilliant. Oh, you're not fun. You've not finished it yet, James. No, no, no. Mm. James is just so really busy; good. he just doesn't have the time. That's true. That's true. Oh, okay. We're that. watching um, Baptiste at the moment. We're just watching like detective this... dramas, so we're watching Baptiste and yeah, that is there's, great. there's a new Baptiste. one, uh, the the AMC one that plays in in uh, Great Britain. It's this ragdoll with this killer. Who would like like sewer people to, to to be a ragdoll? It just it uh, yeah. just came out. I think it came out yesterday, the first episode. And I'll, I'll check really it out. I love I love. Don't I love watch anything else before. except for only murders in the building. Yeah, and, yeah, um, yeah, that's good. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah I want to watch that. Fucking brilliant! Um, I don't know how you get Martin Short, Steve Martin, and Selena Gomez mm-hmm. put them in a show about <laughs> podcast fans that discover a murder, and it's like the best goddamn show that I've watched. Well, Martin yeah. Short and um, Steve Martin are no, hilarious. They've be always fair. been good, even if like maybe their specials or whatever don't stick the landing. But just like them fucking around is hilarious. But they've found the they've family. found their they've they've always been here. But they've found exactly where they should be right now, and somehow added a third party that just happens to be Selena Gomez, and they're all brilliant. It makes it even funnier. Yeah, oh, it's great. Right. I'm Let's watch check it, it out. And like it's it. all out now, so you can but just then- watch it. Exactly. It was a one of the well, one a week sort of thing. Disney so. Plus. Yeah. Well, going back to the adaptations thing, this is where I really hope Sandman, the Sandman Ooh. adaptation, kind of picks up on that. Please be I'm good. Looking that. Oh. Well, they're already yeah. making changes, aren't they? Neil Gaiman's obviously like, I'm yeah. not going to make it the same as the book. It's like the Good Omens one. Good That's o- not exactly the same as the no. book, but it's really good. That's phenomenal. The casting was spot on in that the changes that they made and the fact that they went through. But then you look because then you look at American Gods. I was going to say, Gods how was that? I didn't end up watching it because I read that book and I was like, well, I read it and it was good, so I don't really need to watch this. That's the problem that you've got. The book is kind of the. Diffi- I, know, I hate to be one of those. Oh wow, if you've read yeah. the book, you know, <laughs> because I really had high hopes for it, and I think I just think Ricky Whittle's really good as um, Shadow. 
And I think series one was really exciting and kind of go through. And then for some reason, yeah. it just fell in season two. It just fell flat. I was, and it's the same problem I had with They changed Archer. showrunner though, didn't they? They did, yeah. It was the they, dude that did Legion. I think yeah, a couple, yeah. a couple of people left um, the show. I think uh, like Gillian Anderson as well. Yeah. And she was yeah, they had big, they had big yeah. problems. I think that's why I didn't. Did Crispin Glover left? Yeah, as well? that's why I didn't watch it because I was like, well, they're not. I, don't, I can't. I don't have confidence. They'll finish this, and if they're not going to finish it, no. then I'm not going to start. And then it all fell apart. So, well, why bother? Same with why the last oh man. Cobra Kai. Cobra Kai is coming back soon. <laughs> <laughs> When's Cobra Kai back? I'm not sure. Karate. Should we go on? Let's jump on to posters anyway. So we've got. Karate. So the other print oh, release cool. this weekend is Bella Grace's Dark Knight. So this is a screen print. This is printed by Valhalla. And again, this is our second print with Bella after Jurassic Park. And Jurassic Park went down really well. Um, and she's, again, it's just this there. is great. This is kind of one of those. It is a floating heads poster, which we tend to avoid, but this is one of them that kind of really works because of the concept and how she's kind of put the concept through. Yeah, it's kind of like the Jurassic Park It's the composition as well, because it's a bit like the Jurassic Park, where it's a yeah. bullet smash. You know, it really it's works. kind of like, it leads your eye in, so at least it's got composition. Mm. Absolutely. I might and this a one's foil as well, but this is kind of, this is a matte foil, so it's not a shiny foil, and this is kind of just so that it works a little bit different and you've just got a little bit of shimmer when you move it around. There is a paper version as well, which is more purpley, which I haven't got. I'll go and grab in a sec. But again, it's... Bella's done a really good job with this and it's been at the Princess for a while. We we kind of intended to have this ready for Thor Bubble and we, I think we got it to the Princess back in June, but again, just because of the huge backlogs, um, it only arrived last week, so thankfully it was a bit touch and go, but it landed in time, which is great because this is one that we always intended to have there for this weekend. So, is uh, uh, those are printers proofs, right? Or no, that's it, isn't it? Uh, this is just these are just this just a, no. This is a screen print. This is off the this is off okay. the run. This is just a display copy that's kind of nicked in the corner. So this will go up on the uh, this will be hanging on the on the booth wall over the weekend. Right. So. Um, so yeah, so that's super cool. I'll go and grab, well, you two, you guys just chat a sec. I'm gonna go and grab the regular and I'm also gonna grab Raid's American and Werewolf in London. So hey, I'm before you go, to... James. Yes. Did you get my bookmarks? <laughs> yes. <laughs> are they at the office? Yes, they're here. Do you want me to show them? Oh, no, you don't have to show them. I just wanted to make a show because I literally forgot and I've just remembered now. Why, why not show them? Because it could why be said you... after. Yeah. I'll be back in a sec. <laughs> Look. This show, it's it, a nightmare. I do what I want. Why, why don't? Why? I don't care. It, it's better if we just do random stuff. Bookmarks, everybody. Why, why don't Bookmarks. you want to show freebies? Us? Uh, Surprise! I don't really care that much. They're just to have on the table at the I convention for people look, to look. buy. You know how the like, collectors are. Uh, like five quid, five quid for for a set of five. I, I is that crunching? Very little. Is that crunching picking up on the mic? Thank you yeah, very it's much. Yeah. Good. No, I have to add it. Oh, yeah, I'm an ice cruncher. No, <laughs> you'll be right. Mm. The kids don't care. <laughs> Only Gary will complain. Yeah. It's fine. It's fine. Gary's too nice to complain. Gary doesn't yeah. complain. Gary's very, like, sensible, calm, level-headed. I'm pretty sure that he sent me a message after Amp Jam was like, this fucking Gary thing, thanks for that. <laughs> 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 he said to me as well that he, that he quite likes it. Yeah. Though, I mean, it's come around. <laughs> It's good to have a. It's good for character. Is that I never Stockholm liked syndrome? Ferg, is that people, like a lot of people call me Ferg, and I don't really like Ferg. So yeah, I, I never thought you did, but so then you started going. using it. I, I, I was like, oh, it's yeah, exactly around. because it just becomes a thing. You've just got to accept it. So this is the regular version of Bella's um, yeah. Dark Knight. So that one's nice. got a few more colors. I quite like. I quite there. like that one. It's got like that some sort of um, depth to it. Like it looks like it's got colored lighting or something with the purple. I like that. It's cool. Yeah. Yeah. It's cool. Um, and then finally, last but not least, uh, what is it? Is it least? I'm trying to remember what was left in the price list that I haven't seen yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how have... how to the moon? Ah, oh, yeah, oh, this yeah. One. American Werewolf. Chris Thorne Lee's American Werewolf cool in London. Shit. Very screen printy. So again, it's fu- it's printed. absolutely crazy the way that yeah. his stuff just comes to because i'm looking at it now on a small like window with james's head to the side of it and it all just comes together i'm like that's a realistically drawn city yep. how the fuck's he done that he always but he's it's always just doing scribbly stuff. wibblies it's insane i just hate it so much but i love it's it so not, much it's not right. i don't know how he does it it's not right. uh, james he's got it's what chris is 
Scott Are there three Tower versions? Or I wish I had two versions. No, two versions. So there's the colour and then there's the... Glow. That red all glows in the dark. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's mm-hmm. UV. One, yeah. It's UV sensitive. And then we've got the, uh, the variant edition there as well. And I showed... Um, so that's what I'm showing the people, have. by the way, the UV variant uh, that you sent over as well, the thumb. <laughs> Oh, excellent! The um, yeah. the layer, the the yeah. UV layer. So if you get your UV lights on it, it's like oh, yeah, crazy weird. <laughs> <laughs> cool so that's everything w- that we have for this weekend as matt said we'll be at booths one and two in the red shirts hall from saturday and sunday that's everything vice press has got that's everything Ooh. vice press has got I've matt got did, a bunch of stuff too. did you want to talk about what you've got this weekend that's the doorbell <laughs> <laughs> i've got <laughs> i've got some empire strikes back posters not very many about 15 of them so they're going to go quick and uh, uh, Goonies, which is with Flory, so that's like the APs for that for our Goonies. Uh, the Unicorn, I've got the Unicorn. I've got the seconds of the Unicorn, so they're on sale. Uh, and then I've got a bunch of crap, like you know, like pins and little things and little mini prints and shit. Crap, just come and get some crap. Just buy the crap, you know, it's like a fiver or whatever. <laughs> fiver. That sounds really great. Flory, cool. uh, um, are you going to watch it in, in some uh, capacity or uh, when is your next? The panel? Yeah. The, I mean, obviously on the oh, channel, yeah. but is somebody going to hold up his Instagram live to it? And like... If I could be on it, I would be on it. I don't even know what time you guys are doing. It's like 4.30 in the afternoon, right? Yeah. You'll be tucked yeah. up in bed. Hey, uh, who best needs time, to sleep? best time to do to do a, a panel that at a convention, isn't it? At the end of the day when it's dark. Yeah, yeah nice thanks, one. Yeah. Thanks. You can you can come with the iPad. <laughs> cool. The rolling iPad. It's nice to know. It's nice to know where you where you come in the order of things, isn't it? <clears throat> <laughs> oh, you mean that is a bad thing? Oh, okay. No, I think that's I think that's a good. Slide. Well, I think it's because better. that's just as people are wanting to go and having a seat and have a chat. I just, just always chat. complain, James, about everything. Yeah. If it was earlier, I would say it was too early. <laughs> what the hell? Nobody's even. Out Everyone's there. loose. You know. <laughs> you guys should have a signature cocktail on the way. I guess well. people are there for the weekend, aren't they? That's the thing. Okay, I always forget cooking. that people come from elsewhere to go there, yeah. and yeah. they stay in a hotel and stuff. So what else are they going to do? Exactly. Go to a bar or something. <laughs> Who does that? Well, come listen to us talk shit. Absolutely. Exactly. Cool. So the panel will be 4.30 on Saturday. I think I'm going to go to a bar. Room, 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 room. Why don't you do both? <laughs> You're not. This, you wanted to do this panel. I did want to do it, yeah. So you will you will bloody well be there. <laughs> He'll be there. I will be there. I'm being, what's the word, objectionable. Grumpy pants. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So let's let's wrap this episode up. We'll be back with another special episode probably next week once we've kind of filmed it, edited it, um, unless something goes disastrous disastrously wrong and we don't manage to record it. If not, it will just be special for those folks that come on the day. So thank you very much, everybody, for tuning in, and we will catch right. you all soon. Take care, guys. Bye bye. Bye.